sports utility vehicles long ago replaced the traditional six-cylinder sedan as the preferred choice of family car buyers. Last year's surprise winner, the Kia Sportage, ticked all the boxes in this regard. This year it faces stiff competition from an unknown newcomer in the Skoda Yeti. The Yeti is similar to the Sportage in that it offers a diesel engine and four-wheel drive underpinnings. The other contenders are different propositions. The Volkswagen Tiguan and Nissan X-Trail in this contest drive only the front wheels and sip petrol rather than diesel. The Sportage was a solid all-rounder that combined a long equipment list with a well-thought-out cabin and a strong, refined and efficient diesel engine. Other pluses included an above-average five-year warranty and five-star safety. Small load area and poor vision were notable drawbacks. Defending champion in the category and to me a little bit of a disappointment with the new arrivals from Volkswagen and Skoda, so I don't know whether it's going to stay on top. I love the styling of this, the Kia Sportage. I think it's, it's really come of age. Obviously they've hired some good designers. You can see why it won last year. It's got a really nice cabin and it's not too bad on the road, although I think it's not really up there with the class leaders as far as composure through the bends. The Yeti's quirky looks and odd name don't detract from its considerable appeal. It feels sure-footed on the road, with little lean through corners, and its diesel engine is both efficient and energetic. As with the Sportage though, it doesn't have a huge load area, and it's quite expensive in this company. What hurts the Yeti here is that Skoda's come in a bit expensive in this country, but it's a good all-round car. I don't like it. It's just ugly to look at, but it does everything else so well. I'm flabbergasted by it. The Yeti's one of those cars I don't think a lot of people will put on their shopping list because of it, it's a Skoda and it's a Yeti, but uh, it's actually a surprising vehicle. It's, it's boxy, but that means space inside, and it drives pretty well. Volkswagen's Tiguan stands out in this category for its road manners, cabin quality, and overall refinement. Its turbocharged engine provides ample grunt, although it is better matched to an automatic transmission. The two-wheel drive version comes in sharply priced at less than $30,000. The Tiguan's a classy little SUV. The only problem with this version is that it's, not that it's front-wheel drive, that's fine, but it's not available with a DSG gearbox. So unless you can drive a manual, and you're happy to do so, this car isn't a starter. Priced under 30 k it's a pretty compelling, uh, pretty compelling argument. It'd be interesting to see if the manual-only option will go down well with the judges. Tiguan's incredible value for the price, but it's only front-wheel drive and it's only manual, and I just think that's going to be a stickler for consumers. Nissan's X-Trail can't match the composure of its rivals on the road. It tends to feel more like a traditional SUV, with woolly steering and plenty of body lean through corners. But it has one of the biggest and most flexible rear load areas in its class. If you're looking for space, look no further. With the Nissan X-Trail, the value is what really catches your eye, but on the road and on the track, it was just nowhere near it. Great packaging and practicality and all that sort of stuff, but just a letdown dynamically. It's a big car in its category, but unfortunately, that's pretty much all I can say about it because it doesn't drive as good as it looks. And the winner of Best SUV under $40,000 in Drive's Car of the Year Awards for 2011 is the Skoda Yeti. The Yeti narrowly edged the Sportage in the final vote, getting the nod for its fuel efficiency, cabin quality, and composure on the open road.